We have gathered because we want to pray there. Spirit of the living God, help us today. Amen. Show us ourselves. Amen. So that we will have speed after this encounter. Amen. Glorify yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Please just let's take our seats. And I want to sincerely thank everybody for allowing me to come here. Anytime I have the ability to stand in any platform, I believe it is grace. It's not a right, it's a privilege. There are people better, there are people who have more results, there are people who are higher, and if I find myself, especially in the presence of pastors, I am not, I'm just representing us, and all of us will be learning together. So I thank you for allowing me to come, and I want to sincerely thank you, my friend, uh, it's my friend, uh, Mr. Pastor Atebola, we have known each other for almost 20 years. You know, somebody called me and uh, we were talking and I said he's a boy in the university. That is the last one that I had. And uh, he was the one that was selling uh, Serena and Siri to that person. So we will tell you how long we have known each other. And through him, I met uh, our daddy, uh, Baba Onofi. And uh, I want to appreciate him too. He adopted me as his spiritual son. Though so we don't call up, we don't say up, but when we see, we have a very good fellowship together. And so, if you say I am from uh, Abesan Sakim, you may not be wrong, therefore, because I do there very often. So, once again, I thank everybody for bringing me here. Praise the name of Jesus. My assignment is to talk to us on. Uh, is subject to come up either. And that's it. Time. But as I start in that place, and I look at all of us, and I begin to look, something was just talking to me, that the majority of us in this place, we are like me. At least you had when you read my profile that I'm very retired. And you see, I just start in. I just want to encourage us. Some of us, we take the pastor, we have been pastors. Some of us, we took the pastor, we took it late. But I want to tell us what the Holy Spirit told me when I started that. And it took me to, it's not in what I'm saying now. It took me to the writing of Paul to Timothy. And he was talking to Timothy, he said, Timothy, the faith that you are operating in now was given to you by your grandmother. That is, there are blessings that we may not readily have because we are serving God. But don't forget, they are reserved for your children and your great grandchildren. So I want to encourage you to look at age. In fact, at this age is the time we can give everything to it. I gave it about quarter to nine. And as I got that quarter to nine, I just had myself in that place. I would come to this facility and would not pray. Somebody teach you some things. And I change my vision, I change my focus because I see what somebody has done. And you can still do more than that. And if you cannot do it, your children can do it in your lifetime. And you will take you there that I'm delegating a church and it's also so church. And if now we say, they say the owner, the, the, the person that God built this place to his hand, you now say, my mother is here and my grandmother is here. And that shall be your testimony. In the name of Jesus. So don't let us do support. Don't let us do as we are doing it as part time. Let us give everything into it. Let God meet us doing His work. And that is when our reward is sure. This was in the name of the Lord Jesus. The point we are trying to contend with this morning is in Revelation chapter number 4 and verse number 1. Revelation 4, 1. That's the point we are looking at. That's where the word, the teeth of this lecture comes from. And said, and, and the voice I had first, and the voice I had first are speaking to me like a trumpet, saying, Come up here, or come up here, and I will show you to make what 
to stay pleased after this. At once I was in the spirit. And there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And that is from the revelation of uh, John the Revelator. No. So it becomes very critical for us to understand that this revelation that this man had uh, is a message for us all, for us all. It's a message for us all that we should run with. We should run with. So the message is meant to ignite us. The message is to fire us all. Praise the name of Jesus. The message is to fire us all. Don't forget the man that saw the revelation happened to be one of the apostles of Jesus Christ. And after the demise of Jesus Christ, after Jesus Christ was taken into glory, a lot of things began to happen in the ministry that Jesus left behind. And this man was captured, you know, all of them, they refused to bow. The Roman Empire was in charge. They were doing everything they could. And this man was apprehended and was taken to an island called Patimosh to serve punishment. In that place, it's not a place of Leo. It's a place of war. Because the Bible uh, storytellers told us that the Patimos environment is an island that is made of different rocks. But the major rock in that place was marble. And you know how easy to break marble. So he was there to serve punishment. And if you look at the encounter, uh, we'll get to that, in the early part of chapter 1 of Revelation, he told us why he was there. He said, I was there for two reasons. One, for the word of the Lord, and two, for testimony of Christ. That is, he was carrying the banner of Jesus. That's why the fact that the situation was not conducive, it was dangerous, but it continued. He kept carrying it, and carrying it, and carrying it, until he was arrested and he was taken to that place. And he told us what to have. So let's just go through, since we have uh, it in our room, let's go through it. But I will just be paraphrasing because if I want to dip into it, and my time will not be enough. Praise the name of Jesus. So he went up and he had that word, come up either, come up either, or come up here, or come up higher. Come up higher. And I know most of us were at a level, we are at a level, but that's why the fact that we are at that level, that's a level that is higher than the level you are. The danger in pastoring is to accept where we are. That's the danger in pastoring, to accept the level where we are. We must be craving for another level. We must be craving for another level. Interestingly, we pastors, we allow devil to easily catch us. And what he does is to make us to be envious, to be jealous of gifts. Gifts are not to be jealous of. Gifts are not to be en envious of. But the Bible says, convert every good gift. So you convert it. And when you convert it, you like the way it's going in, and then you put yourself into it and you begin to walk into it until you begin to see yourself transform from one level to another. So there is no reason among us. I find it interesting when you have a pastor up and you have a junior pastor that is on fire and is now pressing that one down. Why are you pressing the person down? That was the time I had a pastor and then he was doing that, 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 that. And one day I called him and said, Oh, Pastor, if I come back from work, because me, I was working, if I come back from work and they gave you teachings, I will lay my hand on it and bless him. He doesn't take anything for me. If I, as I'm coming here, I want to come and preach. And I tell him, What do you have to do to be nothing? I want to come and preach somewhere. Will you not carry me? He will still carry me and carry my Bible. So there's no reason for me to be envious of him. There's no reason. So lose your spirit. If you don't lose your spirit, you will walk in vain. They will not walk in vain in the name of Jesus. Let your spirit be losing. I see most of us here, majority of us here, we are above 50. 
If you put your sword down and you have not raised another pastor, one or two, that is doing fine for the Lord, you have not succeeded on this job. You will succeed in the name of Jesus. So, in Exodus 19.20, Exodus 19.20, it got to a point, Moses has seen the Lord in fire. God has spoken to Moses in fire. But it got to a point, Moses said, God, I want to see you. I want to leave this level I find myself. I want to get to another level. And God said, if you want to get to that level you are talking of, you have to do something. He said, tell your people to wash their clothes. Before you can live where you are, there are clothes washing. Some of us have our spiritual cloth have fell deep. Very, 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 very deep. You know how heavy when you soak cloth in oil, it becomes it become a load. We need to wash our garments. We need, need to wash. So he said, tell them to wash their garments. And said, tell them not to get close to their wife. And what is he saying? You know a lot of pastors nowadays we say when you get to the level, you abandon your wife. It's a demonic sound. It's a demonic sound. It's only death that separates marriage. It's a demonic sound. What he was just telling them in that place is you have responsibility, you have something you need to do, but give it up for me. Give it, let me be your focus. He wanted their focus and he told them when you get to the mountain, stay far away. There's only one person that can climb that mountain and it was Moses. And the reason is that Moses had a counter. He needed to be promoted. The first encounter those people will have of God is the one they saw on the road. So that are spiritual promotions. There is a level you cannot get to before you get to a level. So when you get to that level, then you have the opportunity to get to that level. And we must be serious with desire. And that's why I said, you must not be satisfied with the level you find yourself. Because once you get to a level, you cannot get to the next level. In love, in giving, in service, in dedication, when you get to a level, God takes you to another level. That's how spiritual, spirituality works. So when Moses got there, he got to the mountain, God said, you cannot see me. I'm still going to make reference to what I'm saying now. You cannot see me, and the Bible says, God covered his eye, and he passed, and he called his name in his presence. And the Bible says, from that mountain, he called the Ten Commandments. But what Moses left down, he took it up because he had a terrible spirit of anger. There is a spirit challenging your next level as pastors. And you must locate that spirit. Some of us, it is money. Some of us, it is faith. Some of us, it is authority. Because I have a church, I have the church head. Everything I say is the primary. Nobody can advise me. Any spirit that comes beside my spirit, I want to press down. You cannot get to the next level. So he came, he lost it. So some of us may have been like that. We are rising, we are falling. We are rising, we are falling. We are rising, we are falling. By the time this meeting is over, some of us will be on fire. But by the, the, between one or two weeks, we will lose it again. Why? Because we are not conscious of why we are going. I woke up and I, and, and woke up and I one time and I stepped back. I wanted to step back and I'm four. But I know if I step four, it would have got, I stepped eventually. So I woke up six. And I know this place, I didn't know it. So I was, I wanted to leave out six. So I got out seven, I got there, got out to nine. And I find myself, I said, ah, here I go at the day. So it was on phone, I texted uh, that I am around you. So I found myself in the corner. What can you do? You know, you will get on my life. If you pray for one now, 
he may not be able to finish it for eternity. And at our level, you know our prayer is not our own, it is our children in the So our prayer point is there. And that's why I used to talk with people. I'm a graduate of my YouTube. We pray to God. Ah! When you finish your prayer, you now begin your children. Then, Junior will now call you from US. Mommy, it's like my wife is in the hospital, you want to deliver. You now begin again. Oh, Lord, we go to the village. Another person time, you will not die in my house. Because, ah! Praise the name of Jesus. So we had the encounter, he met with the Lord. Things change. But in that encounter, because you cannot meet the Lord when you are praying, when you are fasting, when you are vigil, when you come for meeting like this, you cannot meet without God dropping something in your life. God drops something in the life of Moses. The Bible says his eye. Nobody could look at his eye. Oh, this one, you don't know I am the pastor of this church. It must be along their spiritual day. Nobody forced position. Nobody forced honor. If you are honorable in that office, you won't need to tell people that this is the pastor. People will give you the honor you are demanding. When you are demanding honor as a husband, when you see a husband that is telling the wife, I am the head of this home, it's because he's not doing his responsibility. No matter how demonic your wife is, call her. The children will be on vacation this month. So, buy two bags of rice, two bags of sebo, four bags of indomie, and this and this and this. And take these two fifty thousand to buy other things. You think that's why if you wake up in the morning, will not miss you. And when it is next month, August, September is when they will resume. You call her. How much is junior school fees? How much is the total school fees? How much is this school fees? He said, How much is the total? I said 1.2. Okay, take 1.5 so that you can go into shopping. Huh? <laughs> so when you are forcing position, it's because you are not there. People are looking at your spiritual capability to recognize your office as pastor. Don't forget before he went to the mountain, people were challenging him. But when he came back, he said, First, we cannot look at your face. Do something. He was there that, he, that told him to do something. And he had to make a little boat to cover the eyes. By the time you leave this mountain, in this encounter, your eyes will shine in you. First thing you are looking at, you are looking by, by you will see it clearly. Those people that are insulting God and your ministry, they will know of the truth that you are a new person as you are stepping down in the power that is in the name of the Lord Jesus. So, I am open to you. There are so many calls, because I'm jumping you can read, there are so many calls that you see in the Bible. When somebody is worn out, God says, Come forth. You see, Lazarus, Lazarus was dead and he called him forth. So Lazarus, come forth! And the Bible says, He that was dead. There are authority that goes into your voice when you get to the next level. Authority, there has to the power and authority that enter your voice to command. To the will, once in heart, he said, Come down. You remember the story of Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus wanted to see God. And when you want to see Jesus, he climbed the tree. And when Jesus go there, you see, at times when you see Bible stories, they look simple. But Jesus was not looking up to look at him. As Jesus got on close to that tree, he knew in his spirit that somebody was hanging on the, on the tree. I don't know that person in your church that is hanging on this tree of poverty, of shame, of death, of whatever that is ridiculing really him. But this time around, you will get to the church and bring them down to the glory of God. Amen. In the power that is in the name of Jesus. Amen. That person that is with that said, come and see. There is something in your hand that people are not looking at. But this time around, after the encounter of this place, people will gather around your church to come and see your God. Amen. They will come and see your God. Amen. They will come and see your God. Amen. They will come and see your God. Amen. Your family will prove your God. Because when they see your children flying, when they see good things happening around you and your family, they will know of the truth you are not doing in vain. God will prove himself in your ministry. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And 
to him that is going to attend home of to me. That is something you have, and that is why every man of God should have word of saving. It takes you to another high. So I discovered that a lot of people believe in vision. I believe in vision, I believe in revelation. But much, much more, I believe in the counsel of the prophet. The counsel of the prophet is not because you are sick. It's because you allow Holy Spirit to tell you. So somebody said, I will leave my husband. You said, don't leave your husband. If you leave your husband, what happened to your children? And as we are talking, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you that something will happen very shortly and you will be surprised. Not that you see anything and in one or two weeks, something happen. They will know of the truth you are standing in the living there. That is how it is. Come and see. Say, so come unto me. Then to a willful heart, he said, Come, take your cross and follow me. You cannot call people to come and follow your goal when you see the way you are following behind your goal. Some of us we are not walking straight, we are not walking right. I used to joke with people that is a church I know, because they have that church. If any of their members come to do business with me, I will treat that person as I'm treating an unbeliever. I'm treating the person as I'm treating an unbeliever. They must see you. People must know you are walking after God and be able to follow you. You will walk right after this encounter. He said, The way I said, Come and die. That is, you have something to give. I told God, I said, God, I want to be one of the givers in my church. You know why people are not giving in your church? Because they are not seeing you, they are not experiencing it through you. I'm not giving because you don't have much, but God will lift your feet out in the name of Jesus. Giving is not because we have. It's not because somebody has. Because somebody has the heart. So as pastors, I want to encourage you. When they are doing anything in the church, let your own be there. I was telling one of my spiritual sons, I said, God, if you stand, if I stand there, I say, God said you want to lift anybody who bring 2009, right? And people are beginning to pay 2,000 And I don't put my own. What I'm saying, because the qualification is what you put down. So anybody that does not put down, whatever the name of that person is not recognized. So let your own always be there. Be a good example in every good area in your church. I used to joke with people. The only thing like the only person in ministry that can shakara me is the people that are drumming. If I sing, if my voice is not good, you will not sing like that. If I sing one song ten times, that is how the Holy Spirit beats me. Uh, it's only the drummers that can say, that's the only thing I cannot do. They must know you are there. You got service for eight, you are getting there nine thirty. I'm not showing sure you example. It's not because you are not busy. It's not because we are not busy. It's because it is the priority. So put you, the work of God and your ministry as your priority. Many, many years ago, my first daughter was in and I had to attend a vigil somewhere. And my wife was away. And I was dressing. She was forbidden. What would I do? I just prayed for her and I left. That's not the face of my But God, if, if I stay in the house, God will still do what they want to. So let me go to, and I was praying for them. And God, it, and it, she survived it. So, and to those of you that come from the album, she said, Come, O ye faith. That's what we sing in the Lord. God, be faithful. But are you faithful? Are you faithful? Be faithful. If you buy mine for church, let the church know you buy mine for them. Don't let them begin to look at the price. I would rather put my money than take church money. I know we need the money. And if I take church money, I will tell them what I use it for. You send me with 25,000 naira to buy money. When I go, I discover I have to transport. So I use 500 the need to transport myself. It's honoring. And that is how it goes. Praise the name of Jesus. I want to run a little because the way we are going, we do not be under one of us to finish this. Now, if you read the account of the Tanon 16, 1 to 7, and he's talking about when they were in God speak to them, and he said, you have moved around this mountain for too long. So you are dwelling in law around this mountain. They find themselves, they said, people had 
palm tree and things like that. And they were enjoying themselves. And they were moving around and around it. And when the Lord looked at them, he said, No, it's a law. You turn to the law. There is always a law. The law is higher than where you are. Locate your law. You know the problem we have as, Christ, as pastors? Some of us, we have unlocated our gifts. And any other person's gift, we like it. Because somebody is, is seeing, then you want to see. Is that what God sent you to do? That's not what God sent you to do. Your own may be to share the word of God. Your own may be to pray. Do you know administration is part of gifts in the ministry? It's a prophet, apostle, uh, pastors and things like that. And administration, that is people that are moving up and down. It's part of gifts. Some people cannot do it in two minutes before they begin to fight. They cannot do it. They just say, hey, I've been working since morning. I put that chair there, I took it away. Be careful, bro. It's not because we're in the house of God. Some people cannot do it. Look at your gift as a pastor. And it's enough for God to bless you. You know, because everybody that sees they give them money. I used to ask myself, you see, yes, you see, it's already. Have you seen the solution? There are two prophets. They are seers. They are prophets of words. A seer said there is a lion at the gate. He was correct. But the prophet of the world does not see lion. But he stood there and said, Every evil on the road die. And when you get there, you saw lion. Who is more powerful? The one that see lion. The one that said lion is there. It's not there. You get there, and you saw lion. You will run. But this one killed the lion from where he is. Enjoy what God has placed in your hand. Don't struggle with anybody's needs. Then you begin to enjoy the ministry. So he said, You have stayed. And you see, you can upgrade your gifts. And how do you upgrade? It's not bad. That is by using that gift, enjoying that gift, appreciating that gift. Why some of our gifts are not being expanded is because we are not appreciating it. And if you don't appreciate your gift, it will die. Some of us, it is a designing spirit that is strong. They say, ah. But your soul will not this rain will not fall in Jesus' name. And the rain will not fall. What do you want more than that? Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, if you read that one, he said you should go to the north. So, in ministry, there are times you need to get up. I explained it there. Get up, go up, and grow up. When you gave your life to Jesus, they ask you, you know, some the pastor you are doing, they ask some people, they say they don't want to. There are some people that say, I can never be pastor. And they are back on it. But you get up. You took it. You get up, you took it. Some of us will go up. We have moved around churches. We have moved around circuits. And some of us will need to grow up. And that is where some of us have that particular problem. To grow up. And every one of them, you see Joshua, Joshua was talking and he said the family of Israel and things like that, from that revelation, they have a cause things and you know there was a problem in the camp. And what they had there was they have seen disobedient rebellion and things like that. You know. In the go up, you see. Uh, in Genesis, the accounts, and in number three, you see, you grow up, you grow up from revelation to realization. The first one said revelation to restoration, that something was wrong and it was restored. The second one is from revelation to resurrection. There are things you need to drop in your life. There are things you must do, and grow up is revelation to realization. That is, you need to realize yourself. You need to realize yourself. You need to realize yourself. So, now, if you read the accounts, I will do some things. I will go from Revelation chapter number one to chapter number four. 
ade aulator ah please permit me talk some things because there's something I want us to see so I will go to the assignment I'm in the three where you have the assignment and I've talked about the assignment it is a revelation chapter number one John was telling us why he went through what he went through he said for two things for the word of God and for the testimony of Christ as a pastor that is what you are defending every pastor what you are defending is the word of God and testimony of Christ and you see the word of God is there the testimony of Christ is when you say I am Alpha and Omega I am beginning and the ending and things like that that is the testimony of Christ himself in most Bible it was written, it is written in red letters. Now, let me emphasize the word of God because I want to I want us to conclude. That is why anything you do, if somebody else do it, you know what they will say? They will say, and she called herself a pastor, I passed off. And he called himself a pastor. Even your wife, for those of us, and my wife does it once in a while. She's the one that wrong you. He assigns you all. He knows your strength. 
That's why you need them to you. There are some of them that they are great evangelists. There are some of them that they are great prophets. There are some of them that they will be very good instruments in the hand of God. But they have an actor problem. You will harmony them until they come out of that character. Many, many years ago, when we were in Buna Chapel, they were doing ordination, and I put the name of one of our brothers in ordination. And a lot of people challenged it, but they don't know anything about it. Today, it's one of the very strong person in that church. Many, many years after I was there, I saw him about one or two years ago. I was coming from the Maja side, and I saw him. I said, ah, ah, ah. He found his car. He said, I should call his side. I was not driving. I came his side. The first thing he told me is that, sir, that time, I was saying one day, I will abuse you. In fact, it was his confession. He said, then after you are there and everything, and today, any time I remember you, I always thank God for your life. He said, when everybody abandoned me, believe I was nobody, you saw something in me. Today, he was one of the abandoned of Bishop Oedi. So don't write anybody off. Maybe you are you may be in ministry for one person. For one person. Because God knows that person is going somewhere, is going higher, and he needs somebody like you to get him to where he's going. So he was transported and he began to see and take that. Please permit me to jump that side because of time. I have just about uh, I have one hour forty-five minutes to use. One hour forty minutes. And I'm almost completing the one hour of the one hour forty minutes. And I want us to be able to see some other things. Now, let me just go down and begin to move from, I mean, page number three, where you have the word assignment. Where you have the word assignment. I want to go through Revelation chapter number one to number four. And I want to connect some things. I want my, well, the Holy Spirit, no, I have done this about two times before I came out with this. And when I came out with this, I was in a place like this and I was praying. And the Spirit said, all the trash you wrote, forget about it. You are talking to pastors and you must let them know what to do. So, I, it was in that place I wrote this. You know, about 15 or 16 pages before it become what it is. You know, right handwriting is smaller than. So, I will want us to please take our time and go through it. In Revelation chapter number one, John told us what happened. He was in Patimo and he said he was in the spirit of the Lord. He was working throughout the week, but on the Sabbath day, I think he was not working. Now, Bible scholars, some people believe, and which I believe to you, that it was in a single revelation in most of the 22 chapters. Some people believe that it broke into different revelations. But it would be a problem for us in our church. We have people that are on the mountain for 21 days. We have people that are on the mountain for seven days. So it was that revelation, but the revelation was so real that he was able to write everything down. So he said, in that, in that revelation, verse number six, he said, he had the voice of the Lord. And what happened is that he could hear God. And he will identify the spirit that every man of God should know how to hear God or identify where God speaks. At times he will not speak to you, he will speak to your husband, he will speak, he will speak to your enemy. People that don't like me to touch, they may be the person that say, Ah, eh, oh, you can't ask you, what that has come to you? Eh, eh, oh, my lady, it's a very good thing. So he identified, he understand instruction. A lot of us, we can hear God, we can identify that he God. We understand the instruction. The problem we have is that we, that we don't take action. As a minister, if you want to go higher, action is required. Action is required. Somebody is going in front of you in the church. And the Spirit of God is laying in your heart. Call and pray for her. He said that, let me tell you, doesn't know how to treat you. You are the person. 
Well, why God said you should pray for her is that because God wants to elevate your ministry. You call her, ah, sister, come, how are you? It's well with you. This week, God will protect you. You will see that what you will say is what God wants you to say. God will protect you. This week, I cancel for her accident. I said, I cancel for her accident. I said, I can't say it's not there. In between the week, Okada almost fall our sister down. The child, Okada almost eat our sister. When they don't say testimony time, blessing time, she will be the first person to carry my and say, Ah, I will just tell you, she just told me, and just pray for me. This week, God deliver me from Okada accident. God deliver my husband from Okada accident. In fact, it was me and my, ch- my child that was in the Okada, but God deliver us. The Okada man then comes. That is. God want to prove your office. That is the power of action in ministry. At times I speak, you wake up and God lay a sister in your heart. Stand up and pray. That's how it is. So, job, nice action, and you do the action. In verse 12, he said, I talk. He said, I had a voice. And I talk. There is every point of turning for you. If you are doing something the same way, the same time, and you are having the same result, you may need to turn. Let me say this to us. Those of us that find ourselves with this thing, don't just say it as Gamboli. There are need for us to network. There's an area I have strength that you don't have. You have an area of strength that I don't have. When the two of us begin to see each other and now discover your area of strength, God may grant me grace in that area of strength. So it's not about, ah, uh, we know each other, uh, and then because they are taught by boss and your, your own has not by boss, then you are not, you are angry with it. Who told you somebody in this church cannot buy boss for your church? So in turn, we need to turn, we need to focus, we need to know where we are going. And he said, and God told him, don't fear. Don't fear. Verse number 17 of chapter number 1 of Revelation. God said, don't fear. Most of us were afraid. You know, I've heard a lot of people that talk about offer to for pastors. And I laugh, and I used to tell people, come on, have you offer? Because any conversation, the one that sends you is behind you. If he call you with him and you are doing it the way he asks you to do, nobody can tell off her. Nobody. Let me tell you one thing. Let me tell you one thing. Do you know ourselves or to ourselves? We think it for ourselves. And we just feel ourselves and say, ah, oh, you dead. If you be dead, you can lie. We don't do it. So, if somebody is not thinking that to you, you yourself, you are thinking it to yourself. Some of us, if our child, we go from here to Ibadan. Ah, I don't have that anger. Because we are afraid. We are, when, you are, when you are afraid, there is a prayer we pray from fear. Somebody is going to Ibadan, you call that person six times and you call yourself Ibadan. My sister was laughing, I dropped her head of her. And she came and said, I said, I was not expecting her to tell you. Because I pray in the night and God showed me she were alive. As simple as that. As simple as that. Stand on the authority of the word of God. So in chapter number two and three, I will take them together. Chapter number two and three, I will take them together. Now in chapter number two and three, John was talking of churches and the churches were divided into seven. The seven churches, let me say this, all the churches in the world, they fall under the seven categories. And your church, they fall under one or share from others. And that is why as pastor, we must sit down and look at ourselves. So, he began to mention the churches one by one. He began to talk of the churches one after he said, the church in Ephesus. He said, they have work. I mean, uh, chapter number four. He said, they have work if you, if you follow the way I think they, they might have changed that. 
He said, the church in Ephesus, he said, you have what? You have labor? You have patience? You hate evil? You check for the spirit of a person that labor and something like that. He said, but there's one thing you meet. He said, your first love. There are churches that are on fire. They are doing everything. They are doing everything. Pastor does not do visitation. When they say, ah, and they come about speak to only to 50,000, it's not your money they are looking at. Your visitation may be thing that will spoil that person off. Because what is first law? He said, which one is the greatest law? He said, one, love for God with all your heart and your spirit and things and things like that. He said, the second is like unto it. Love thy neighbor as thyself. He said, that is your challenge. You are doing everything right. You are laboring, you are spending money, you are doing things, but your love capacity is low. Let me tell you this. You said, I should not join Abu I ran. You said, I should not join Area Boy, I ran. And I run to the church. Then my wife now delivered the baby. And want to do the baby for four. My pastor paid 530. The first member paid 630. And we are now waiting for my pastor. Where is the Lord? And that is why you, as a pastor, you are a team lead. Let there be good things. There are people that can do it for you. I say, look, we have many so, 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 to go, we go. Where we go? How many people will go with them? They will be there. The, the name is 4 4. They will be there at 3 30. That person will not be able to say, ah, they are my church member. These are my church member. These are my church member. He said, You lack first law. That may be the problem in your church. No law. Somebody bring car, they are gossiping. Somebody build house, they are gossiping. In the children's way, they are gossiping. It's that I change to that every two, two months. The accounting is a this year. I look, I this is so good. I choose if, I, if I'm not lying, if I'm not lying, in the front of God, you cannot call back to back lie. You might be a lot of that, you pay dead, you know, ask you to me, what is your business? What is your business? Are the pastors that are richer than me? Problem. God is placing everybody at his level. There's something you have that somebody is praying to have. There's something somebody has that you are praying to have. Be satisfied with what he gave you. When you satisfy, we have to eat. But let me tell you, it's not about number of congregation. Some people can manage large congregation. Some people can manage small congregation. But your ministry can go far beyond your church. So grow your ministry. Grow your ministry. So that is there. He said, to the church in Sima, he said, a church in poverty, some of us, our church, we are under that roof. We are not able to flow our church. Tribulation, our neighbors are disturbing us. They don't allow us to move. Pretentious. You have pretentious member members that are pretending. They are fearful. You are facing challenges around you. He said, don't worry. I'm not abandoning you. He began to encourage them. He began to encourage them. He said, I'm not abandoning you. Your church may be like that. You may be struggling, you may be doing it. But God is saying, there are churches at that level. But God is telling you, I am not abandoning you. What you need to stir up your faithfulness. Stir up your faithfulness. Let me say this to you. I am, if I meet the people here, I will preach the way I preach. It doesn't take anything from me. I have been to churches to, to preach that when I got there, I was telling the pastor to have the speaker. And I've been on platform. If, if you are saying platform this year that I've been, which platform will be greater than this one? Which platform? I'm not talking to ordinary people, I'm talking to pastors, shepherds, people that know like me. Praise the name of Jesus. So he was encouraging them, rewarding, and he said, Don't give up. Don't give up. I am for you. And then, then he came to the church in Pagamos. He said, 
that location and that size was terrible. That is where some of our churches are. Some of our churches, this our church is a mosque. And the Ololo Boni of that community is in front of that church. That is where our church is. The location is a location where Muslims are reading. Everything is like it's against us. He said, I know your location. Your site was terrible. They were, they were killed. They were despised. They did not deny the faith. They still held to the faith. But they wrote doctrine of Balaam and the Ulatians. The problem they have is doctrine. Some of our churches will have problem of doctrine. Let me tell you, don't argue with the doctrine of your church. You know they are wearing this before you join them. You look for husband, you are 35, it was when you joined them you marry. You marry at 25, you did not have baby until you are almost 40. It is when you join them, you now have baby. Now you are now, your problem is now solved. You are not debating even the garment where it's too long. It's too short. Uh, is this? What is your problem? What is your problem? Let me tell you this. Every has his own church. Have his own church. Every let me tell you, you want every church to go to that to impress you. If you go to church where your prophets are not there, you will go there to dance and clap. Go to church where your prophets are. There was a time I was praying one day and God showed me something and you know my this sister said, okay, you say, Mother, the ministry you are, you should have no higher than this, you should be using G and things like that. And in the night hour in the dream, I saw myself in the dream and I saw that that specific church, if I got there, and I saw that I lost my Bible. I am talking of myself. And I lost my Bible. If you are a pastor, you are writing chief, you are building houses, you lost your Bible. What happened to heaven? So, my doctrines. I mean, I don't like people that have doctrines. So I don't like it. He said, when we are coming here, we should offer our shoes. You know, we, why we are arguing doctrine, you know, is because we go into Christianity where it goes about our heart and fault. If you see what it takes then to take the covenant of this church, you will bow. Some of them lose their wife, some of them lose their children, some of them it is in the battle they die. The other man says, I don't really want to get it, it's easy to go, but does it? Ah. Any, any more? Praise the name of Jesus. So he said, you have an issue with doctrine. You question doctrine. You argue doctrine. You are challenging the authority. You are saying the, the fact that the leaders are not educated as you does not make you above them. When you come to church, drop your certificate. Drop your office. Because that's the only way you can be blessed. That's the only way you can be blessed. Many people are earning million, million. At the end of the day, they die in a rented apartment. I went to pray for a man. It was the man of God I invited. And I said, ah, Pastor, let us come and see this daddy. So I will hand him over to you. And then I went there. We prayed, I left. He said, Pastor, come and see me tomorrow. I will show you something. When the, when the man wrote the contract he had taken, when money was money, he took a one contract in South Korea and Principe, one point something million US dollars. As at the time I was praying for the man, he was in a rented bedroom flat. He said, My house is the best in the garden. He said, I built my house in the in a animal show here. He sold the house to go and take another house in the one estate. One car. He now became nothing. Praise the name of Jesus. So he said their problem was doctrine. Doctrine is then doctrine. Ten Tilia. Then they have they have work, they have charity, they have service, faith, patient, but they allow fornication and eat things sacrificed unto idol, impurity. For the body, pray for anybody or whatever has got as much that. 
Okay, what they do is that they are told that they take money for anything. At times, some of us pastors, we are not eating idol. But the person we are pursuing, because he's giving us money, we know what he's doing. Anything you take, you are eating idol. And that is my boy. If you come like this, this money. You are not asking for all the big class in your church, all the people that are talking. It's only here. I say, ah, who fed us? Send you to read here because we sent you money. And you are eating idol. You are eating idol. Some of us we allow fornication. Fornication to what God is not feeling And you say, power of God is not moving. Say, so this is the problem that you have. I know we are looking at ourselves and we are checking at our churches. He said, church is sadness. The world are not perfect before God. They live but dead. They are living dead people. Their work was not perfect before God. So they are living but dead. Now let me say this to you. A church may be big, beautiful, fantastic drug, fantastic everything, but they are dead church. If your church is not preparing anybody for heaven, is the dead church. It's the dead church. It's a dead church. It's a dead church. And that is why if we encourage people to, to, to manifest, if you are doing small fellowship, don't pray everything from the beginning to the end. Look at the sister. Sister, I pray for her. The prayer may be bad. Another time when you do it, you see that that prayer will improve. One of my pastor is a big pastor in our ministry today. The first time, I, the first day I said he should preach on Sunday service, he preached 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, he was looking at me and was looking down. When he finishes the sermon, I turned the other. I said, Let us take our offering. After the service came to me, he said, Sir, I thought you were hard to win. I said, That is what God wants us to have. That is what he said. Another one, I said he should preach on Sunday. He did not come. I've almost gave me the message to have before he came. Wow. After he apologized, I apologize. I still give him opportunity to be. Today, he has a ministry in America. Yeah. 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 Give him an opportunity. Yeah. The work is not. If you want to do it alone, it will do work for you. Yeah. That's why right. you are the one that is doing it. You are the one that is doing it. You are the one that is doing it. You are the one that is ah. There are some of them that have fire in their mouth. Too. Do you know one thing? The grace, the gift that is not in your life is in the life of some of your members. Let them exercise it. And as for that one good thing, then you go to work. Two hundred dollars, I'm going to go back. Pastor, the church made me. I'm going to go to the church now. Because Pastor is there, I should be free. Before you go, gradually, the thing is reduced. You are going to say, Sister, Brother, give a message because eight pastor I don't know of our sister so so so. I'm not going to have my brother. And I don't waste that. I don't waste time. When you get there, just pray. Don't waste time. Don't sit down. Just pray and so that the next time they want to follow you, they get there. Now say, sister, a compressor for share on the energy. Brother, you have to do like that. They will now begin to say, ah, you know what you do to your love. You are improving them. The consciousness is entering them. And before you know, they are on fire. God will help you in the name of Jesus. He said the church in Philadelphia. This was the only church that got all that got all of Why? Because it is the church that is based on the word of its patience. The word of God. Our God level as pastors must be high. Let me say this to you. You will do yourself a lot of harm if you are not easy to another pastor. Everything I'm saying here, you think all of them come from my head? You know? I sit down, I study, I start this one I'm saying, it was me. Every other thing, I do, I do a lot of things to arrive at where I am. Since last week, I've been praying for, for uh, anointing for function for all trances. You may say it and the Lord will not understand. That's how to get there. Preparation before you get there. They are the only one that wants it right. Because I am not coming here by my own words. I am not coming here by my years. I am coming. Up till I get to this gate, I was still afraid. 
I was still afraid, I was still telling God he would help me. He would help me. When I came, I went to that hall. I was praying. Some people who passed, they would have seen me that. I was still praying. That's how to do it. So they were the only person that did it and it was right. So he said, open door for them because they kept his word. They had full obedience. Obedience. Some of you, you don't obey your circuit headquarters. You don't obey. When they say, circuit headquarters say every member should do this. It's money, money, money from circuit. Hey. Hey, yeah, now we'll be really wonderful. They should tell me before they start. If you want to use me, it's genuine. Ah, next time, if I tell that one, they get it going. That is all. Then, hey, so for me, I'm going to die off. So, if you have a professional who is younger, one day you'll be a commissioner that touch the other one. You'll be a senior for the other one. I want to join one different. 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 You are the one that kills the fire of love in death. Then, church in Lassito, Leodosia, he said, the prosperous church, but neither cold nor hot. Big church, rich member, little faith. No commitment to God. No love of God and man. That is the church in that place. There are some of our churches that are beautiful. Everybody there, they are mortal millionaire. They come with BBG. Evangelism, they know they. Somebody want to do something, they know they. This one, they are not present. They are just coming in and coming out wearing the garments. Some of them, once they close their Bible this one, the next one, and those are the people they will invite you. My daughter is wedding. You will go there. You will do this. Then you get to wedding. They divide you into two. You that come from church, this side. Aha. Our, our friends, this side. Everything is flowing. And they see, look where, look where, look where. They now say, ah, ask them, ah, what they want to do? They close in prayer. Then you two, you sit down there. Because they say you do close in prayer. And you are wasting your time and the time of God. Praise the name of Jesus. So he said, one thing is that you are not an ought of God, I will call you out. So those are the seven classes of churches that are present. Present in that place. Let's quickly look at the call of our meeting. If you go to Revelation chapter number 4, I have read 2 and 3 now. I'm in chapter number 4 of Revelation. Chapter number 4. This man said, I heard that voice like the first. The voice of the Lord is powerful. O Holy One, O Five, the Tender Rejai. O Holy One, O Five, the Tender Rejai. He had the voice. He had the voice. He could recognize the voice because he had heard it before. And he said, I do and behold. He look and he behold. He look and he behold. Most of us, we are not looking. Most of us, we are not beholding. There are a ministry, there is a level of look. There is intensity in beholding. Let me tell you, I got on my year, year, and I got on my book. Ah, I'm so people, you come on, she come on, and it's hard. It's hard. So that you don't become a cast away. I got on my year, year, and I got on my book. You look deeply the word of God. You behold the word of God. You behold the things of spirit. He said, I look and I behold. It was when he looked, he did not see. Until when he behold, he now see a door open. There is an open door for you at this assignment. Yeah. In the power that is in the name of the Lord Jesus. So he saw, he looked and he behold, and he saw. You can be. 2 Corinthians 3.18 for, for uh, reference. And remember the story of Uzziah. Uzziah said, when Isaiah said, when Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. There may be somebody that is covering our view. 
na mistori na discovery the glory of God in our life it may be our character it may be our attitude it may be our behavior some of us we are pastor we are lazy pastoring work is not for lazy people it's not for lazy people it's not for lazy people, not for lazy people. i know some of us age age wise but by now you will have somebody by your side and do some things for you because we have groomed them they are thinking like you there are some people in my church even when they give me time to talk if they talk ahead of me at times they won't sit in line with the other i will just do like this today because what i want to say they have said one and half of it so i will just do like this today they know so what i do like that i will not have that on there i will just get there only of the other people Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I go home with fresh. It's not every time you should be making noise. Once in a while, allow them to do it. Praise the Lord. So it be home. Let me say this God is standing waiting for us. And if we are not saying it, Hebrew 12 1, lay aside every wind and every sin that is in me beset you. And if you look at that scripture, there are two words there. Wait and sin. Wait is different from sin. Wait is different from sin. Some of us, our wait is, I want to be a I want any money, I want any money. But if you don't manage to do it very well, it will drag you down. It will, make, it will not make you to get to where you should get to. Leave time for your office as a pastor. It's not a lazy pastor that goes to church on the day of program alone. The next part. Sammy said, you know me to be back to go be a get a lost in the world. So because you, you are late in church on Sunday and you are not doing anything on Monday, who told you you cannot do that? A lot, I had a, a, a friend pastor. He was not in his office during the week and the man drove, drove, came back. And when he came back, he just knocked it off. He said, God said I should give this car to a pastor. So when I when I'm driving it, God now said I should give it to you. And he got the car, not on Sunday, not from his members. Some of us are losing a lot of things. Where you exercise your, your ministry and the power of God in your life, at times comes on that midday that there's no service and you run away. Somebody has come and said, I prefer to have a contract to come, who will pass over who will drive me, and you help me. And he pray, and he go, and he come back, and he bless you. That's how it is. That's how it is. Those of us like me that have retired. That is, I told people, they normally say, What work are you doing now? I said, I'm, I'm praying, and I'm doing business. I am praying, and I am doing business. But prayer is number one. Prayer is number one. Some of us, if they give us prayer contracts that we know money we talk, we can pass three, seven days. They are coming around with their work. They are bringing me, they are bringing more money. No use it on them, they do. Use it on your family too. Ah, what? Oh, what are you doing, yo? That was the time I was praying for everybody. Everybody. You want to try? Up to now, I still have issues with it. It should not be at me. Because if I sit in the night hour like this, I will pray pray. Or my woman is telling me, you don't have any money. Do you know these people you want to be yourself? Or? They have another five prophets beside you. When some of them come to you know me, you go back, open cross check it, does the prophet do it is only? And one prophet has spoken, but you now want to see whether you will see the same thing. That's why he's with me. The anointing is made for you. He said in a something else, there are different versions. Taba de Kosinuku, Shadi Bibu Adono Woku. Ah, the Bibu Adono Woku. That little oil that remains meant for you. It's meant for you. It's meant for you. Pray for your family. Pray for you. Pray for yourself. Pray for your business. Pray so that as they are flying, you will fly. That one just don't for two by four. I was told that they brought the minister, 
Lord, we help us. Amen. Amen. So, he saw the door. He saw the door, the door opened. He saw the throne. When the door opened, he saw the throne. The throne of God is meant for two things. It's meant for judgment, it's meant for praise. In Hebrew, he said, let us come to the throne of grace, where we will obtain help. So when the throne of grace appears, at times we obtain help, but don't forget that the throne that is set, eventually for grace, we call it the throne for judgment. And it can be our job. So let's know that the throne that is set. Please permit me to to uh, what we need to do. Number one, go higher or go down either. This invitation is for you to know God intimately. You must create intimacy with God. How do you create intimacy with God? Your prayer life, your word life, your relationship. Don't just have friends with people that are not pastors. Have pastors that know where you meet. The iron will sharpen iron. But you see that you sit down and discuss things that pertain to your ministry. Two, the invitation is for maturity. It's for maturity. I'm towards the end of the something. It's for maturity. When you get up, you will be mature. You go for maturity. And then it's for deep secrets. A mystery of God. It exposes you to a uh, mystery of God. You know, if you go higher, it gives you mystery. You know, there are some people that they cannot sleep once without having revelation. Oh, it's a normal lama. One day, one lama. Oh, or two men, you know, at this level of our life, it is only true among God that we say Allah God. And let me say this to you. Our Baba Batuani Bokoro, Allah Lobo, and Yemoku, and Yemoko, 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 and the person that wrote, small who? He said, when you dream, it's because you are not speak well. I was listening to, I think Christ said, Pastor, this week or so. He said, if they bring food in your dream, eat it very well. Ah, okay. Okay, for the one girl, okay, I want the, oh, that's it, eh, eh, those two faith missions, no? Papa, they meet, 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 they because we are not so we are allowing this about about to die we are not moving close to them we need them Where mosquitoes say, Primo? 